Hey, what is up everybody? This is Jumpin' here, and today this is going to be continuing my series, You Built It. This is going to be episode 4. This is a series where you build a build in the game, and you give it to me, and I try it out, and I tell you what I think about it. Today is going to be the N7 Shadow Shadow Strike build. This was given to me by Riviette, who's also one of my friends, and um, left the comment for N7 Shadow Strike build, and... Definitely wanted to do this to kill two birds with one stone. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see a Shadow Strike build. And looking over his build, I thought it sounded really, really good. Tried it out, and I would have to agree. So, for the weapon, pretty much, um, the weapon, you're not going to shoot much with her, so you could use something very light. Uh, Carnifax is a pretty good choice. Of course, you want some type of melee enhancer. And I like the extended barrel, um, just because I don't mind using armor piercing 2 or something like that. Now for his build, uh, Tactical Cloak, this is going to be duration, this is really nice honestly, um, it extends your duration to 11 seconds, and it definitely allows you to guarantee get two shadow strikes off, which is pretty much just death to an enemy. Now of course you're going to want melee damage, this is very obvious, I think everybody would go for this, um, this will increase your melee damage on all your melees. And then finally, bonus power. This will allow you to get two shadow strikes off, and with the 11 seconds, you're just guaranteed to always get two shadow strikes normally off. Um, now, he recommended Electrical Slash at 3. I don't know if I would agree with this, because as I played with his build, I do have to say that I think that this... Um, I just never used it. I just never found a use for it. Um, it's up to you if you want to keep it or not. Now for Shadow Strike. Now, this is interesting, and I really like this idea. Pure damage, um, and I would have to agree 100% with this. I don't think the damage protection is really that useful, and I'll get into that in the video. Uh, and the damage is a lot better in the first field. Electrical damage, definitely. This gives you DPS, and it can set up tech burst. And the DPS is nice for killing some larger enemies. And then finally, damage, which is 50%. Now, the shield drain is also extremely effective, extremely good. But if you're playing with people with energy drain, overload, or arc grenades, which a lot of people do, this can become somewhat useless uh, just because you have to drain shields. And if they don't have a shield from your teammates, hitting them with powers and such, it's useless. So I think the damage overall is better than the shield drain. It just it just happens way too much when you try to like, you know, you need your shield, you need your shield, and you can't get it. Now for the N7 Shadow, this is also very interesting that he told me. Um, N7 Shadow is pretty much power damage. Uh, the reason why is because, believe it or not, Shadow Strike does benefit from power damage. Now it's supposed to, the way it's supposed to work is that it's supposed to just get melee damage bonuses. And a lot of you guys probably think that, but no. N7 Shadow actually, um, or the power damage does affect it. Now, for sword mastery, pretty much sword damage, uh, martial artists, this is really nice. Once you get one sword kill, you will really never lose it. And then finally, he recommended armor damage for killing bosses. And I kind of have to somewhat agree because uh, on gold at least, like, you can pretty much one hit every enemy. So the shield damage, I don't really know if that's even necessary. And the armor, I mean, the armor damage is just going to be for bosses and reapers and such. Now for the equipment I'm going to be using in this video, is going to be armor piercing 2 uh, for guardians. Strength Enhancer 3, um, that's very obvious, you need that. Stronghold Package 5, now Stronghold Package 5, wouldn't recommend this, I would say that there's another one that gives you melee damage and shields, be better, that would be a lot better, and finally Cyclonic Modulator 3, just for, um, because she's flimsy. Alright, let's get into the gameplay. Alright guys, so the first thing I want to say right away is that um, a couple other equipments you could use is of course you could use shield power cells that can help you get your shields back faster like I said she's really really flimsy so cyclonic modulator is nice shield power cells is nice just to get your shields back um, and then the other thing is believe it or not power amplifier will make your shadow strike a lot stronger so power amp fours and such that's forty percent more damage to shadow strike now I know that sounds confusing a lot of people think that it's just based off of melee damage because that's what they pretty much said that's what they pretty much um, say it is, is that oh this is purely based off of melee damage nothing else but that's not true I don't know if it's a glitch or what but if you don't believe me take a look for yourself reset her get up her n7 shadow power damage um, perks and then take a look at the damage it goes up I think like almost 250 points or 240 points something like that and that makes sense because its base is 600 
and it goes up 45%. So, <clears throat> like I said, just take a look at it. Take a look at it, and it's it's really cool. Now, do you need the power amp? No, not for gold. Like this Shadow Strike is this build is actually really effective. I do have to admit. Um, you can't get pretty much one hit almost every normal enemy in the game. There's only a couple you can't. Um, well, there's three of them that I know. Is uh, you cannot one hit Pyros. You just take them. You take down their full shield. But all you have to do is hit them with one heavy melee after or two Shadow Strikes. But you know, mainly I just hit them, heavy melee them, and that's enough. Like they'll die after that. Phantoms, yeah, you will not always one hit them. Uh, sometimes you can do a lot of well. What will happen is that you'll take them down very low, and then the electrical damage can potentially kill them. Um, and if your teammates overload, energy drain, anything along those lines, even shoot, uh, even shoot the phantom just a, just a little bit, you will one hit a phantom, which is really cool. And then the final one is Geth Hunters. Geth Hunters, you'll take down to pretty much like one or two bars of health. And what's what what will always happen is the electrical damage just instantly kills them. So it's like pretty much a one hit. You don't even have you could just hit a hunter and run away, and it will die from electrical damage from the shadow strike. So that's a couple thing. That's a couple things about this build. All right, <clears throat> like I said, so this build was given to me by Riviet. He's actually going to be in this gameplay. He is a friend of mine. And I was kind of surprised to see his comment. Uh, the reason why I chose this build over all the other builds was because it's, well, it's an N7 Shadow build. I would prefer it um, if you guys are going to comment, because I do want you guys to comment, give me your build, all that kind of good stuff. You might know how it works. But I would prefer something with the new DLC. Uh, you know, that's just how it goes, because uh, a lot of people want to see all new DLC stuff. And when I seen that Riviette commented in uh, 7 Shadow Melee build, I was actually pretty excited. I wanted to definitely try this out. Mainly because I know that a lot of you guys were disappointed in my Electrical Slash build. And you thought it was boring. And you kept saying, I, can you come out with another video with um, Shadow Strike? Now one thing I do want to say is that Shadow Strike is definitely effective. It is a lot of fun, I guess. It's, it's kind of fun. But the biggest problem people had with the Electrical Slash build, which was my build, was that, oh, you know, it's just spamming one power nonstop. It's very boring. It's, it would be a very boring build, which is true. It can be a little boring. But then again, this just a Shadow Strike melee build is the same thing, really. It's just kind of boring. You're just going to constantly press two buttons. You're just going to press Y or, or the Cloak button, the Cloak, and then you're just going to press the Shadow Strike button over and over again and you're just gonna keep doing that and keep doing that and then occasionally you'll use your melee is your actual melees or your heavy melee to help you kill enemies but then again the electrical slash build was the same thing where you just spam electrical slash and then occasionally you would just do your your heavy melees and you would shadow strike here and there I mean that's just the way it goes guys um, but like I said you do I do highly suggest you do go for the N7 shadow power damage just because it will affect the shadow strike um, and it is it, I think the reason why it's a little bit more fun uh, to shadow strike than it is to electrical slash is because at least this way you actually can move around the map the other way is um, the electrical slash build is definitely a lot more it's a lot way way more safe she's very flimsy like I said and it's kinda dangerous getting in point blank close to certain enemies especially boss level enemies with her so the electrical slash is nice because you can stay further back and just do it from a distance where this you actually have to get point blank but the main thing that makes this kinda fun is just the fact that you actually can move around the map you have to run around the map you have to find the enemies but <clears throat> there is a couple things I do want to say um Depending on who you're playing with, if you're playing with like some pretty good players, which in this gameplay I'm going to be playing with some really like some pretty pretty good players. Uh, Riviet himself is really good. I'm going to be playing with Snide and another one of my buddies, uh, Vinny, and you know they're pretty good players. But one thing about this gameplay too, by the way, is, which is really cool, is that I have a uh, Vinny, uh, Vinny and Snide decided to go ahead and play as N7 Paladin melee builds which um, they pretty much will focus on just sm smashing, just shield, ba just shield bashing the whole, the whole time. 
and it's really cool because uh, it's actually going to help me out a lot uh, in the fact that they're going to just knock down enemies and I can just kill them with Shadow Strike and such. And it looks cool, like right there, like in midair, uh, the Assault Trooper was flying from the Shield Bash and I was able to slice him up. Um, so that's really, really cool. But like I was saying, there is a couple of downsides that I normally, that I, I don't really like about Shadow Str uh, Strike in general. From, from what I've seen, when I play with an uh, N7 Shadow using Shadow Strike, when, when I play as something, let's say I'm playing as a uh, Solarian Infiltrator, or I'm playing as a certain um, kind of OP kind of um, kind of character or something, um, if I'm playing as something pretty good, and one of my friends are playing as an N7 Shadow Strike build, what I, from, from what I've noticed is that normally by the time that they even get close enough to Shadow Strike, I can potentially just kill them. And because Shadow Strike is a sneak attack, it they come out of nowhere. So even if it, I, I wouldn't like want to steal all their kills intentionally, but if I'm aiming at an enemy and then my buddy's also just trying to Shadow Strike it, normally he just won't get many kills because it's just it's taking him longer to kill enemies than it can take me, which like one shot of like a claymore or something. Um, so that's something I do want to say. And the other thing is. I think the pure damage, I 100% agree with Riviet. the pure damage is way better. Um, Shield Drain is a good field, I think. It has potential to be good. It's just that if you're playing with people who are using Arc Grenades, Overload, Energy Drain, I mean, think about it. There's so many people who play with characters like that. The Corian Male is still really popular. The Demolisher is popular. The Salarian Infiltrator is popular. The Paladin is popular. Um, Geth Engineer, things with Overload, they're very popular, so the chance of like, if you're playing with people like that, and you try to go in to, like, oh I need my shield, I need my shield, I need my shield, if you try to go and Shadow Strike something for your shield, yeah, you might not get your shield back, because they might have already drained it somehow using a power, so that is something to think about guys, the pure damage is kind of better, because that will guarantee you to kill all normal enemies, on gold at least, one hit. Now, would I recommend her for Platinum? I don't really know. I have yet to attempt her on Platinum. But I, I would say this, is that on Platinum, more than likely, she won't be able to one-hit all these enemies like she can on Gold. And that could definitely pose somewhat of a problem for her. Um, so that is something you can think about. Is that, like I said, she might not one-hit everything. And she is pretty flimsy. And she's pretty much a Vanguard in a lot of ways, where she has to get in point-blank range. And that can definitely pose a problem. The other thing is, I just don't really like her for boss killing. I think that she's not that great of a boss killer in the game. Uh, it takes quite a while, even with armor damage, even with everything, um, to single-handedly kill a boss. Now, of course, if you have help from your teammates uh, in the process of fighting a boss, it's a lot, lot, lot easier. And it will be a lot more effective overall. But... When it comes down to it, though, m the majority of the time, if you're trying to fight a boss by yourself, you're just going to, it's going to take a long time. And I think everybody knows that getting point blank to bosses is never really a good idea because of Banshees can grab you, Atlases can grab you, um, Primes can counter melee you and just blow you away. There's a lot of things that can happen when you're trying to heavy melee or melee a boss in general. So just try to keep that in mind. I think she's way better uh, and, and just kind of designed for the idea that she is um, an assassin. She goes around the battlefield assassinating every single normal enemy. And then the best thing to do is just kind of allow your teammates to deal with the bosses. The other reason why I don't think Platinum is the greatest thing ever for her is because you have to fight Reapers on Platinum. And I think Reapers are definitely her number one weakness. She's a lot more effective against Geth enemies and Cerberus enemies than she is against Reaper enemies. Um, I've seen some comments about this, about Shadow Strike, and it kind of like made me scratch my head and say, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, a lot of people th were saying that, well, Shadow Strike is extremely effective against Brutes and Ravagers and a lot of Reaper enemies. And I just don't see it. I've tried her against Reapers, and man... It's so easy to get wrecked as her because this is what will happen against a brute. If you try to shadow strike a brute, not all the time, but sometimes what will happen is that you'll accidentally touch his uh, armor, which will pretty much kill you. That will, that, that, well, it won't kill you, but it can literally 
take down your whole shield and knock you out of the shadow strike. So your shadow strike doesn't even hit him. And that's just really annoying when that happens. You're like, oh, that sucks. And, you know, if you don't have a shield, you're going to lose all your health. And if you don't have a lot of health, you're going to die. So there's a lot of things like brutes can really mess you up. Like a brute can destroy you as uh, the shadow just because you have to try to heavy melee it. And they just, you don't really want to try to melee a brute too much. Um, and then the other one is Ravengers. I've seen a comment from somebody saying that actually Ravengers are one of the best enemies to heavy melee against Reapers. And I just don't know what the hell that guy was talking about because this is what always happens to me when I try to heavy melee a Ravenger. Um, and especially if I try to Shadow Strike a Ravenger with her. I will see the Ravenger, I will go for the Shadow Strike. As I get, um, as I get point blank to the Ravenger, it will explode all of its sacks at once. Um, normally that will happen when you get to really close range with a Vanguard or something to a Ravenger. It will explode all its, all its sacks. Now, if it explodes all its sacks, that's like can be almost instant death. That can actually kill you, like um, in general, like just one explosion. It's like a grenade. It's it could kill you, and if it doesn't kill you, it's going to take down all your shields, and then it's going to release like a billion swarmers. Now, the swarmers can get on you and swarm you, and that will kill you. So overall, like when you see when I see Ravager, I don't even want to mess with it because I know that every time I, I get close, it's going to explode. And then I'm going to get eaten by Swarmers. And the only thing I can do to survive that on gold or on um, platinum or really just gold. Um, the only thing I can do to survive something like that is to use an op pack. And you just don't want to have to use an op pack every time you fight a Ravager. Because you're just going to run out of op packs. So, and everyone knows that op packs never work anyway. So whatever. Um, like I said, so overall I think that's her number one weakness is, is Reapers. And because of that reason, and the reason that she's flimsy, and the reason that Shadow Strike will not probably work as effective on Platinum, I really don't know if I would recommend her for Platinum. It's just what it is. Um, there's a lot of better people. I think Platinum is all about using the best of the best. Uh, and that's really what my Platinum role players videos are going to be all about. The best of the best. Like, what is the best character in every field that does work as extremely effective. Overpoweredness does not matter in my book for platinum. Anything goes. Um, but that's just me. So now let me go ahead and get back to this build though. But overall, I do have to say the Shadow Strike build, it is fun and it is very effective. It is really cool to be able to just one hit and fly. She's a Vanguard, like I said, she can fly through walls. You see an enemy, an outline of an enemy. You could pretty much teleport through the whole map to get to that enemy and stab it in the back. And by doing that, uh, and that's actually a really good idea too. That way your teammates can't mess up your shadow strike. Now, you know, this game's not about competing, but it's also just kind of annoying when someone is constantly stealing your shadow strike kill. Everybody wants to, you know, you want, you want to stab these enemies in the back. You want to slice them up. Um... And it's a lot of fun to be able to shadow strike a phantom. I think everybody knows that because uh, it's just like as you do it, you're like, yeah, bitch, karma's a bitch. Uh, it's just what it is. Like that's something that you normally will say to her. But I mean, I don't know. Right here, I, I believe this is um, a really dumb moment. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, really stupid. I don't even know how that happened. I hate when that happens. I wish that a fa if a phantom has its back turned to me. Um, and I can, I can literally, I mean, I'm, I was staring at her ass, and then all of a sudden she stabbed me. Like, that shouldn't happen. She should be, have to be in front of you to do it. The animation is in front of you, so she shouldn't be able to just do something like that. And because of the fact that Riviette, if you didn't know, have already, he's, he's the Krogan Vanguard. He's been already stabbed. Now I'm stabbed. It's just going to be Vinny and Snine. Now, unfortunately, they're playing as just these Paladin melee builds. Which are definitely good support builds, but they're not very good like solo builds, like just solo in clutch. So that's something you gotta remember. And unfortunately, Vinny, now right here, Vinny went down, but the thing about it is that he bled out. And when he bled out, we were like, what the hell, man? Why did you bleed out? And he said, well, there was a phantom standing over my dead body. And I've heard that excuse from a lot of people. They'll literally let themselves bleed out. If there's a banshee or a phantom standing over them. 
Because, and here's the truth, is that the truth of the matter is that, yes, if there is an enemy like that standing over you, if you get up, there is a, there is a good chance you might be stabbed or grabbed. But when it comes down to helping out your teammates and, and being a good team player, you should still get up. Even if that wastes some meta gel, even if you do get stabbed, because it's only, here's how it goes, it's a chance. It's only a chance that you may be stabbed. It's a guaranteed that you're going to die if you bleed out. So, in my book, I will always get up, even if there's that chance, because I don't want my team to fail. And who knows, we might have failed this. It's just what it is. Alright, so right here, Snipe's going to beat the crap out of this nemesis, and pretty much in the wave, so... Good job, Snide. He was looking a little confused, though. <laughs> like, we were pretty much screaming at him, like, Snide, there's the nemesis! Look out! Um, and he was just, like, confused. We were all, like, just trying to tell him where it was. All right, so this is going to be wave nine. And this is going to be, like, a pretty fast wave. We're going to rock it, kind of, to make up some time because of what happened last wave. Um, but anyway, yeah, the shadow is definitely fun to play as. It is definitely fun, and like I think that this build is very effective. I do have to admit. Now, if I was to change anything on this build from Riviette's build, if I was going to change anything, it would probably just be uh, the electrical slash mainly. I just don't see a use for it myself. Now, of course, if you want to try this, go for it. If you want to try the electrical slash, you might find a use for it. Of course, you could always use it for some distance. I just don't know. I just think the Shadow Strike for a build like this is more effective than the Electrical Slash at all. So I would probably go for like weapons damage or something over that, or even weapons weight. Now, you don't really shoot with her, so the weapons damage is whatever. But you could like potentially shoot with her if you put like a good shotgun like the Piranha on her or something. Um, that's something you could do. You could run around and shoot your gun. So that's what's up. Like right there was a good example. Like even though I didn't kill the Phantom. I did, like, she still died from the electrical damage, and that will consistently happen, that, that will happen a lot, where after the Shadow Strike, they, they will just, like, run off and, and hide somewhere, and, and they'll die because of the DPS, so that is something that's awesome. Like I said, so Shadow Strike's really cool, and it's a lot of fun to Shadow Strike Phantoms, and this wave, this upcoming Wave 10, this is really gonna show like how awesome she can be at just being a phantom destroyer um now right here i was gonna rocket the first target but then i seen i was being swarmed by phantoms so instead i just went ahead and took out the phantoms now i'm gonna come up here and try to help riviette but i was thinking he was gonna maybe rocket this atlas so after a minute i just like looked at him like hey man hey uh -huh. uh, are you gonna rocket <laughs> and then like i guess i was just like whatever and I took the rocket, I mean, but it wasn't like funny, because I, mean, I literally looked at him like, you, you gonna rock it, man? You, you wanna rock it? You wanna rock it? You wanna rock it? Uh, it? You know, sometimes, like, that can happen. Like, you never wanna make your teammate waste a rocket. You wanna, and you don't ever wanna waste a rocket yourself. So it is kind of a good idea to do what I did there, where it's just kind of like, you, you wanna be like, hey, do you wanna rock it? You wanna rock it? Are you gonna rock it? Are you gonna rock it? Just because, like, you just don't want that to happen. You don't wanna waste rockets, ever. Um... But anyway, we're going to roll through this. I mean, we're going to pretty much rocket everything. Unfortunately, right here, Reviet's going to be stabbed again. Um, that can definitely happen as a Krogan or as anything. So, um, yeah, but as you can tell, like, she is just very effective. Like, there's so many phantoms in Wave 10 on gold. Um, and she's just as taking them out like nothing. Like, um, and just the fact that you can take down their full barrier one hit, that's going to help you and your team a lot. Because, um... Just that barrier can be kind of a, a definitely an issue. Like a good example is that if I take down the full barrier of a phantom and then Snide ran up and decided just to melee the phantom with the shield, that will knock the phantom down, pretty much killing it. So that is what's up. It's just the downside to like the paladin is taking that shield initially off. That is that is definitely a downside. Once you get the shield off, or not the shield, but when taking the barrier off of Phantom. Once you get the barrier down, a Paladin can just wreck a Phantom. But until that barrier is down, it's not that easy. Now, right here, unfortunately, Snide, um, I think he was stabbed, so that sucks. Um, and it's just going to be me and Vinny left to kill, I th believe, both these Atlases. Now, at this point, as you may know, I have yet to go down, like legitimately down. Now, I'm not flawless, though, because I've been stabbed in uh, Wave 8. And if, now, I would have, like, like I said, this will show how it just can be kind of a nuisance to try to deal with um, an Atlas or with a boss level enemy by yourself. Well, not by yourself. I actually have a teammate here. 
but it's still not that it still takes quite a while to deal with a boss um I just I don't know I just don't know like it's just what it is so and because it takes so long a lot of times you will die in the process of trying to fight a boss like whoop here you go um I just got annihilated but I'm going to actually let this boss ex execute me I'm going to just die I don't really care uh remember guys on gold this can happen to you now where you can get executed by an atlas so if you die point blank next to an atlas you have to get up it's just that simple you have to get up same with an assault trooper. If, you, if an assault trooper kills you, you need to get up because they are programmed now to instantly just run over to you and stomp you out. All right, right here, I'm going to take a rocket. Oh, yeah, four phantoms, whatever. Um, it is kind of ridiculous. Um, now, remember, this is over the weekend, so this is going to be 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, they're supposed to be extended uh, extraction time. Now, the thing about that, though, is that uh, you, you think that 30 seconds really would not make a big deal. But it really does, it really has made me think about that. Because I, I mean, I would say it's kind of a big deal. That extra 30 seconds feels like an extra, like, two minutes at times. Um, it, it's crazy. Like, it's so, it, it's not hard. It's not really, like, harder. It's the same thing. As long as you can hold your ground, you're good. But it. Well, you're just gonna it's gonna be longer holding your ground and that can that can get you killed. And what's unfortunate is that I think that if they wanted to make this game harder, they could make the default extraction way for platinum or something three minutes. That would be ridiculous. It would be so hard. But nobody cares about the extraction wave. This weekend is like the only probably time that you're ever gonna see people care about the extraction. I think that's one reason why they're doing what they're doing with the the weekends is that they're saying oh get so many extractions because nobody cares about the extraction the extraction doesn't really do anything it just gives you more experience it doesn't give you money it, maybe they should make it so you can get some money if you get the full extraction that would be nice because that would make people want to do it most people are just willing to just die after they get the money they don't really care most people play on level 20s like myself, like right now, I have not been promoting, and I just play a level 20, so I don't need the experience, I don't really care, I'm just kind of down to just die, now for the gameplays, of course, I'm going to go for the full extractions, or I'm going to go for the extractions in general, because it's for the gameplay, but when in casual games of myself, when I'm playing with some friends or something, after we get the money, we normally just die, there's no point to waste an extra, you know, three, four, five minutes, and right here, this is so dumb. Look at this. Oh, I hate when that happens, man. I just hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. What that was is that that's like an op pack stupid glitch thing where sometimes if you're down to a little, that last last little sliver of health and you op pack and you, you are hit with a very powerful attack, an explosion, a, a geth hunter, a prime, a atlas, something like that. If you're hit with any of that, like, it counts you as still being, like, no health. And you just drop dead. And because of that, we didn't get the full extraction. So that's very unfortunate. But it does happen. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, like I said, please subscribe to me if you haven't. And please comment for any builds you uh, want me to use. And, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. So have a nice day.